one after another, you see all these helicopters that are just going in, dropping out the commando units, and then they're eliminating all the labs. You never get over the shock of actually seeing like a lab, and this is the root, this is the genesis right here, right in the jungles of Colombia. This is what's wild about the coca leaf too. It just looks like a plain old leaf. This is what a war is fought over right here. Dalsen it right now. With gasoline, they're gonna torch the whole place. They burned the last lap. That's one of many today that we burned. We're taking off. These guys are telling us to get out of here quickly. For four months, we have worked with special operators in Colombia and Peru, and it has given us a unique look into the war on drugs. The missions we've been a part of have struck deep at the heart of the cartels and limited the flow of cocaine. We choose to come to this area because this is the genesis, the beginning of where this evil is born. This is the source. This is a mission about bringing light into darkness. two fronts in the war on drugs. One is to stop it at the source, and the other is to treat those who have fallen victim to it. We've made it through some tough stretches in Colombia, and it's definitely a war out there. We see the missions we've been a part of on TV and read about them on the news, but to truly understand the reason why these labs must be destroyed, it's necessary to show what a drug addiction can do to a life. So tomorrow we're heading to a rehab center in the downtown to hear from the victims who were once lost in the grip of addiction. We have about 36 hours before our next operation, and hearing these stories will not only serve as a reminder to why it's important to fight, but just who we're fighting for. Okay. Hello. So this is Oliver, the founder of the Rehab Center? Okay. All right. So we can get started? Recuerdo cuando usted haya sentido en que en todos los lugares que él ha visto y especialmente en este tipo de testimonios, lo más común es ver que la gente siempre trata de llenar ese vacío que siente en su interior. Trata de llenarlo con diferentes You know, when he was in that period for 20 years, what drugs was he uh, addicted to at that time? Quiero saber. So he, he says that he tried a different kind of drugs. He went all the way from from crack, marijuana. He tried a pill. He tried a different kind of drugs. But the one who destroyed his life entirely was the crack. It was crack, crack yeah. cocaine. What does he see as the main thing? It gets a person into an addiction of a drug. Cuando Dios ya restauró mi corazón, cuando Dios yo le permití entrar y Dios me sanó y me restauró. In the in the world, people try to fill that void, hmm? but he says that in his own personal experience, despite the fact that he tried different things in the world, he was not satisfied at all by any of them. Yeah. And he says that thanks to that, he received a total recovery, and he felt that all, everything that he felt, that void, was totally, totally filled. Sure. 
by Jesus. So it's safe to say, you know, from all the experiences that you've seen and the people that you've come through in your own experience, that it comes down to, you know, the characteristic of people feel an emptiness and they're trying to fill that emptiness. Two. Can you tell us what it was like the first time that you tried crack cocaine? That day, it was a night, man. That day it just changed my life, bro. Look, man, you hit that thing one time and you just and you just throw smoke. And you feel so much anxious. And yeah. You wanna keep smoking, man. Yeah. And I mean, I got addicted to that stuff. I sold my clothes, I sold my shoes, I sold my cell phone. I was, you know, I was dressing like, like a crazy boy in the street, man. And I don't go home no more, cause you know, I was with the game. So I smoke so much that I don't, I don't even eat, man. I just keep smoking. And one day my mom just found me in the streets. And I remember that day, man, she was crying. She said, man, look what did, what did, what you did to your life, bro. And she said, I got a place you can might go. I mean, I'm, look, I'm 17 years old. Well, I live too much in this life. I wow, you're only 17 years old? Yeah. Wow. Man, you can see right here in Colombia, right there on, it's a place over here, man. It's a street. They say cocaine weed pills, yeah. cocaine yeah. weed pills. They they wall. Wall. Yeah, like they a shot. Oh, wow. And police don't do nothing. Wow. You see kids over there, three years old, and smoking, man. Smoking, wow. bro. Wow. Some little girls with uh, 11, 12 years, and they are having sex with Bad guys just because because crap. Or, just to get money so they yeah, can have the next fix. You're addicted to that stuff. Yeah, you cannot you'll do whatever. Money. Yeah, do whatever. Man. This saved my life and saved uh, her life. Jesus is knocking on the door. Yeah. Just open. You've seen the absolute darkness of the world, and you've been through you know hell and back, and now it's like you have such a powerful testimony. That other people's lives so it's like God is just like molding you and getting you ready right now to go out and just you know change other people's lives you know so whereas the devil tried to destroy your lives now you're gonna go out and change other people's lives to the word of God so that's good It's hard to explain the emotions that you feel when you see a person who's recovering from a drug addiction. On the one hand, you're happy because they've found the light in Christ. But on the other, you see the trap of the enemy and know there are millions more who will never have the chance to recover. Tomorrow we leave for our final mission, and it's not like we needed any extra motivation. But I will say, as we step out into whatever darkness awaits us in the jungle, the stories from the rehab center is something that'll be on our mind. Right now we're uh, we're getting ready for the first uh, the first mission in. You can see the jungle team coming over right now. They're about to uh, to get ready to go. So there's a lab out there. This is the lab that you know we've been hearing about the whole time. And uh, this is you know this is one of the you know a very very important mission here. But uh, we're getting ready right now. We're getting ready to go deep into the jungle. The yeah. The briefing's just about to start, and we just heard we're going after an HCL lab. And what an HCL lab is, it's a hydrochloride cocaine laboratory. And 
these are considered very high priority targets because they're the most sophisticated labs out there. They have chemists, armed guards, and they can produce several tons of cocaine each month. So this is a very big mission we're on today. And uh, another concern is actually how close we're gonna be to the border, but he's about to start the, the briefing right now. We'll listen into that. What's he saying about Venezuela? Yeah, they're saying that uh, you, need to, you need to know that we're working really close to the border with Venezuela. Oh yeah, look, the HCL lab is right on the border. We are going to be left alone for, like, for, for 10 minutes on the field. But the helicopters will stick around to give us support? So they, and they're yeah. just monitoring yeah, any monitoring. kind of movement or anything. So yeah. any kind of like group comes, you know, they're going to know. Yeah, because we're at the border, they want to know who is there. That's interesting. Yeah. It's technical, is it? Kind of true. Yeah, way technical. How many helicopters are going in? Two. All right, so we just got out of the briefing in uh, in Kukatan. There's a bunch of things that uh, that are very, very dangerous about this mission. More dangerous than any other mission that we've done before is the fact that there's a lot of FARC activity. They said that there's over 30 uh, people at each of these laboratories. One of the things that they stressed the most in that meeting was they said, we are right on the border of Venezuela. And it's a very, very big political issue right now because Hugo Chavez is very anti-Western. And, uh, and so doing these operations is very sensitive. Colombia has tons of uh, rebel groups. They basically seek asylum in Venezuela, come across into Colombia, and then disrupt. Uh, one of the things that's a little bit concerning is they said they will take long-range sniper shots, and uh, they target foreigners. We happen to be the only two foreigners on this, uh, you know, this mission going in. You just gotta stay close to the guys at all times. You can make sure you don't stray from them. And you know what? You keep down low. So we've just inserted into uh, into a hillside. There's about three rivers here, and there's two houses that we spotted from above. And one of the biggest things they're watching out for is uh, is the booby traps. But they're going to head into this bush, and they're going to go right after the first laboratory. But this is where it's dangerous because there's lots of um, there's lots of FARC activity in this area as well, too. You can see it from above. There's definitely people here because they were running out of the houses when we when we looked down from above. They're still providing air support above right now. Inserted in. Blackhawks are circling, doing cover. We're going for the first lab right now. Going through this dense bush right here. Mm -hmm. 
from where the laboratory is. We're about to come through. We're just in this dense ditch jungle. And the lab is directly this way. And what they're doing is they're sending in an advanced team to clear the area and make sure the perimeter is clear of any FARC elements. We're maybe a quarter mile from the Venezuelan border right now. Yeah, we have to wait. Okay. Okay, the last note is clear. They're clearing it right now, so we're waiting for the call up to advance. All right, let's move on. We can smell the laboratory right now. It's that 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 cocaine, that root paste and chemical cocaine smell. Alguien sabía que íbamos a venir, ya. Sí, le escuché los helicópteros y... They heard the choppers. They destroyed this in that amount of time? Oh, man, they were just here. Look at how far down this goes. Look at this. This is a huge laboratory. I mean, this one goes like on a gangway all the way down. It's like, it's got three different compartments to it. This is all the mixing rooms. You just look at this. This is amazing to actually see. Row upon row of these uh, mixing area. They mix the paste, they mix the, the powder. You got these huge vats, this straining area. It's like this mesh that they strain the product in and then you come back here. And the guys right now are basically photographing everything, taking notes of everything, and actually testing if the Coke is pure, if the Coke is you know real. It's all very, very toxic. They have a lot of this like powder and stuff like that. It's dangerous. Dangerous. Very good stuff. Very good. Very good stuff. One thing that they were saying to us in there was they're saying, you know, uh, the narcotics dealers are constantly trying to come up with new chemical compounds that won't be detected by either search dogs or it won't even come up as cocaine. So they're bringing that back to base and they'll analyze that and they'll, you know, know for the future if anything's, uh, uh, if anything's being attempted. See microwaves behind me here. This is for all the drying of the, the cocaine. You see these little packets, and what these, this is what's so strange about it. They add these as like a bleach effect, and basically this uh, whitens the cocaine. This gives the, uh, the white appearance uh, to it. So what's that? So this is, uh, this is the press that they use, and those packets that you see on TV, you know, when you see a seizure, and you know, they're all nicely pressed and packeted. This is it right here. This is a kilo packet where they you know, go down, they press them, Oh, look at this over here. You can see how many packets they were doing. Basically, what you got here is you got a numbered system of how many kilos are basically coming out here, and then they stack them in this closet. But you look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve for each row. You're looking at 36, almost like 50 packets that they were doing, you know? And this is just in one. Uh, toilet like roll that they hang up and they have massive amounts in there you know you have like you have like you know 40 or 50 of these rolls so this is probably what they go through in one day just hammering this stuff out and you know the street value of uh, of these packets and this is saying panelas which is like panels uh, this is you know probably astounding how much you know they're actually producing out of here and uh, everything is done start to finish in these laboratories all the way from harvesting the coca to the chemical process you know and then bringing it on down here to baking it in the labs and then pressing it and packing it right here oh, 
Alright, what they're doing right now is uh, wiring this whole place for explosives. And uh, everybody's kind of really in a hurry. The helicopters are starting to circle quickly because they really want to get out of here. Well, they're saying the charges are set. I'll meet you back at the LZ in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. All right, moving back to the landing zone right now. We'll, uh, we'll stay with the detonation team. And the choppers uh, are radioing down, seeing that there's some enemy movement in the bush near us. Hopefully, Will's already on the move. Got the wire coming all the way down the hill. I'm gonna leave one person and detonate and uh, blow a huge hole here. Let's go past this one. One minute off, boom. One minute off. Joseph. It's one minute before they blow. I still think Will's down there. Find a hole, find a hole. Here we go. Whoa. Look at that plume coming up. That was huge. That was all three of those labs that we were just in. They just blew the lab, huge explosion in the, the canopy forest there. Smoke high into the, the clouds. And now we're, uh, choppers are coming for extraction. So they're hurrying me down so we can get the helicopter. Another explosion right there. That was the second one. Deep in the bush there, you just hear it explode. And that's the remainder of it. We're still bringing the cables down and they blew it up, so it's good to hear. Let's go. Go to the right. Look to the right. All right, the choppers are coming in. You see it right above me there. They're coming in right now. So we're making a dash for it as fast as we can. They're really trying to get us out of here quickly. After those explosions went, here comes the chopper now.
Someone once said, if a man stands up for an ideal and strikes out at injustice, he sends forth a ripple of hope that can be an inspiration. In life, every man has to choose what he'll live for. And if we bring light into darkness, the world can change. The war on drugs is a battle that is both physical and spiritual, but it is a war that can be won. It is a war that can be won because we stand in faith, and in the end, we trust in the light. If you would like to receive a DVD of the episodes you've just seen, please go to TravelTheRoad.com or call 1-866-EXPLORE. Our mission at Travel the Road is to preach the gospel to all creation and encourage the church to be active in the Great Commission. The episodes we produce are with the sole aim to make an internal difference and to inspire a new generation for missions. To find out more about the ministry of Travel the Road or to order from our catalog of DVDs, please visit us at TravelTheRoad.com and together we can make a difference.